Okay, good afternoon everybody. It's Bart. You might know me from multirotorforums.com and uh, this is another video uh, done towards our group build project and I'm just going to talk very briefly about uh, where you're going to be where you're going to be placing your equipment, how you might run your wires, just a couple quick things that you would need to consider in the process of getting ready to start attaching things to other things. So, this is a hostess Twinkie, has nothing to do with the video, but I'm going to eat it. And, rooting for the Packers. So anyway, um, Twinkie time. Oh. Mm. Good stuff. Anyway, you've got your helicopter, you've got your arms, you've got frame plates. This is the top, this is the bottom, and there's some considerations. Um, you could put your parts just about anywhere. Uh, one of the problems that comes into play though, if you don't think ahead, is uh, where do all the wires go? The wires are the big challenge. The pieces normally just fall into place, but the wires take some thought. You don't want wires rubbing it up against the edges. You know, you don't want wires coming like this and then wrapping tight around the frame, because this from vibration will cut through the wires, and then you'll have your shorts, and that causes crashes. You also don't want wires to be pinched. That breaks the wire inside eventually. The vibration works on it and um, that'll cause the strands inside to break and if this is a high current application uh, that wire will heat up. It could fail, could cause a little fire or, or at least uh, you know burn out the wires inside and that would cause a failure. So let's look at this real quick. Let's look at the arms with the motor wires and where the ESCs are gonna go first. So here's your standard DJI arm with the standard DJI motor, okay? They give you these short little wires. Best thing to do with these is to just put them down through the frame through one hole. Okay, you just pull them through. And you don't wanna pull them super tight. You don't wanna leave them super floppy. So somewhere in the middle there so that there's no stress on them. And what you're gonna do is you can just plug these in right now, these three wires, go into the three ports, the motor ports. And a good way to install these is to just give this a few twists like that. Put it right there. Put a quick tie around that, maybe two quick ties and they're good. If you find that your quick ties might be sliding or might be prone to sliding, you know it's plastic against plastic, a couple little dabs of hot glue will usually uh, keep things from moving around, okay? So what would then happen is you would take these two wires and when you attach this to your frame plate, like so, these two wires get soldered to those two spots. And this all goes back to that first video where I said these frame plates make for a very quick and very easy assembly because the power is built into this lower frame plate. So this would bolt here. You could either take these wires and just kind of loop them or bend them so that they touch, or you can just cut them to length, uh, strip some of the insulation off and solder them so they go right into place. But Again, you don't want the wires to have to be pulled into position. You don't really want a lot of excess wire flopping around, uh, especially because if you get in the habit of letting all of your wiring get sloppy where you're not really cutting things to the right length, on the bigger helicopter, it's actually gonna add some weight. So trying to keep the weight to a minimum is always a desirable uh, goal when you're building and, and making decisions. So for a standard DJI arm, there's a million videos out there that show you how to do this, but you attach the motor, you run your wires down through a hole. You try not to give things the opportunity to rub. And by twisting them, uh, you'll see videos out there, you'll see comments about um, radio frequency interference and magnetic field uh, interference. So what happens is when the power is running through the wires, they generate um, uh, RFI, radio frequency interference, or is it magnetic interference? But by twisting the wires together, I'm not an expert on electronics and all that stuff, but by twisting the wires together, it prevents them from creating that interference. So if you do this throughout the helicopter, if you twist the motor wires a little bit, if you twist 
the power wires a little bit. All this stuff is cumulative, so it just makes your helicopter a lower uh, generator of these different kinds of interference which can affect your flight control, can affect your GPS performance, it could affect your video quality. So normally um, you could put a sleeve over the wires, like if you had these wires, you could put them through one of those woven nylon or woven metal sleeves. And all those sleeves do is it keeps the wires in close proximity to each other because when they're next to each other the interference is all canceled out. The other way to do it without those sleeves is to just give them a few twists. It keeps them in close proximity to each other and the wiring won't generate the kinds of interference. Especially with you FPV guys, um, you want to keep all of your wiring tight, like not tight, but um, you don't want it generating uh, these different kinds of fields because it will interfere with your video. So if you're flying and uh, you know your video quality is fading in and out, you might have a, a dirty build where your wiring is not really neat and tidy. Uh, twisted where it needs to be twisted and that affects things. So that's the DJI arm. That's how I would do it. Now with my Tiger motor uh, I'm gonna use the same DJI you notice I stopped eating my Twinkie. It's because I'm talking. So you're still using the DJI ESC's and I'm gonna have to cut these wires to length at some point I'm going to have to put a little bullet connector on there, right, with a little piece of uh, heat shrink tubing for insulation. But where am I going to mount the ESC? Do I want to mount it all the way in here? There's not a lot of room there. Do I want to mount it up here and just go straight in like that? I'm probably going to mount it close, as close as I can get it, right about there. Okay, and I'll zip tie it to the arm. Um, a lot of times also, I didn't say this before, but you know, this is kind of a smooth hard surface. This is a smooth hard surface. So I'll probably put a little layer of some sort of foam in between those two. Uh, something that works real well is, um, I think I might have a little piece over here. Something that works really well for that is this stuff. It's weather stripping foam. You could buy it at a home center. It's uh, adhesive on one side, but you just cut little pieces, you put it in between things, and it helps to keep things from moving around. It keeps the vibration from being transferred directly from one hard surface into another, um, and it's cheap. So that's good. But what I'll probably do is I'll probably put this in relatively close to the frame. I'll run my wires through that hole just like the other one, and then I'll twist these up and they'll go right into those three things. When you're connecting motor wires, put all three motor wires in, see which way your motor turns. If it's turning the opposite direction that you want, switching any two wires reverses the direction of the motor. It's super simple. It's a little, it's like a secret, I guess, when you first get into it, but the second somebody tells it to you, it should stick in your head. Change any two motor wires, it reverses the direction of the motor, okay? The last thing uh, worth mentioning now is placement of the flight control itself. Okay, so with the NASA, this module is the flight controller. That's got the sensors in it. That's what's actually picking up on the movement, uh, correcting for it, manipulating it. Um, this is a surface mount unit. There's no holes to bolt through to attach it. So typically what you'll just do is put some double-sided tape under there. Uh, some of the helicopter guys have been using gyros for years. They have special gyro uh, double-sided foamy tape that puts it in place and gives it a little bit of uh, isolation from the airframe vibrations. But what you'll end up doing is uh, taking the NASA, and this is the way they, this is the preferred mounting technique, is to plop it right in the middle of the frame, use some double-sided tape to hold it there. Typically what I like to do is uh, you know, I'm not against using double-sided tape, but then I like some secondary mechanical thing to hold it in place, maybe a quick tie or something. And um, so a surface-mounted uh, flight control, you'd plop it into place. Here's another example of a, a surface mount flight control. This is an APM 2.5, uh, also known as uh, Arducopter. And this could be plopped right down in the middle of the frame if you wanted to. 
although some of these motor pads get in the way and this is where some planning is necessary. If you plop this down right there, um, you'd come back after you've attached your wires and say, okay, I'm ready to mount the flight control and it would be sitting on these attach points for the ESCs, which is no good. So you would have to build this up a little bit to get it up above that. And actually that's what I plan on doing with the NASA controller. I just have a little bit of blue foam, which is very lightweight, kind of soft if you poke it with your finger, but if you mash down on it with the flight controller, it's actually very rigid. So I'm just gonna put that underneath my flight controller to get it up off the board a little bit. I still have room for my wires to come out the front, my wires to go in the back. The frame plate will fit over the top of it. I'm only lifting it up about a 3 8 7 inch. Maybe it's a half an inch, but um, I just want to get the wires up off of the frame plate because I'm going to be putting my battery wires here, my ESC wires, so I just want to lift it up a little bit. Um, but then somebody also mentioned they're going to use a KK2. KK is Captain I guess it's Captain Kook, uh, Kyuk, I'm not sure how he says it, but uh, this is a KK2, you get these from Hobby King, and if you're gonna mount this, this is probably better off mounted on the top frame plate, in which case you're gonna have to drill some holes or make a little adapter or something, which is not totally out of the question, but um, again, when you look back at your wires, how are the wires gonna get from these prongs or from these prongs uh, to your receiver? So here's your receiver, a bunch of wires, where are you going to put the receiver and how are the wires going to run and putting a little bit of thought into this ahead of time uh, before you start assembling things before you start cutting wires um, putting a little bit of thought into this goes a long way towards making the build happen quickly uh, happen successfully if you don't put some thought ahead of time into some of these things. You know, don't sideline your build, don't spend six months planning your every wire, um, but just a little bit of thought ahead of time helps you to avoid snags later on which could stop your build and cause you to have to completely take it apart and start over. Okay, so um, for this build, for the way I'm doing my F450 build, I have a little bit of foam I'm gonna put on there with some, probably some latex or some epoxy or something. I'll center that. My nose is going to go right there on top of it. Um, I'm going to have to figure out how to put a little something over the top of that to keep it in place, to keep it from vibrating loose. Okay? And then once I have my top frame plate in place, I'm going to have my receiver sit up on top like that. I'll have my GPS puck on one of these corners and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have if you look at the lower frame plate you can see where that little piece of copper is um, mounted to the surface of the the plate. So I'm going to scrape a little square and I'll show this in a later video but I'm going to scrape a little square bare right there a little bit bigger than these attach points and on the bottom is the negative plate you can kind of see it around the edges uh, I'm going to scratch a little square there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two wires one like this and the other one will be like that so there'll be one set of wires coming over to this battery one set coming over to this battery the red ones will be on top. The black ones will attach in the same place on the bottom. And that's going to be where I attach my two batteries. I'm going to attach my VU connections. That's the versatile unit. I showed this earlier. I have a battery connection on there right now. I'm going to cut that. These are going to get soldered to these two pads. Okay, and this is the power distribution that's built in. I'm taking advantage of it. So I'm going to put these two wires there probably along with another set of wires for accessory type stuff. So I can pull that 4S power, I'm going to have one of those little red JST plugs. Uh, I might not even use it right away, but I'll have it there available if I want to hook up some lights later on, or if I need some power for like a little video transmitter or something. Um, and that's the way I'm going to do my build. I'm going to have 
two wires, top and bottom. Red's on top because the red is the positive. You can see the circle. You can see where the circle, the little branches come out to these solder pads. The negatives are not attached to the circle because they transfer up from the bottom. So the negative's on the bottom, the red is on top. I'm going to scratch a pad open right there. Two battery wires, VU to these two, and um, I think we're ready to start going. So I'm going to get started with the build. I'll post another video once I've got some stuff attached. And if you've been considering how you're going to get started, if you have the DJI ARF kit with these components, you could start attaching motors to your arms. You could attach the arms to the lower frame plates. Okay, um, you're going to be attaching uh, ESCs at some point, and a good way to do that will be figure out where this ESC is going to go. Figure out the lengths of your wires. Okay, cut them to the length you want. Only skin a little bit of wire. You could even attach the ESC, and I think this is the way the DJI video shows it, you can attach the ESCs to the pads like that without anything else attached to it. And then before you put it on your arm, you just give it a couple twists, you put it up into place and zip tie it. Okay? That's it. We're moving along. We'll be done before you know it. Ask any questions in the thread, and um, if there's a suggestion you have for a video or something you'd like to see done in a video, Again, uh, post it in the thread and we'll work it in. Thanks for watching.